Hello, I'm here today with seven of my favorite delay pedals and we're gonna be using them in combination with synths, in particular, the Bass Station 2. So more of like a creative exploratory uh, electronic music setting. Delay is obviously a pretty easy effects to explain, but nowadays, just like all other gear, hardware effects pedals have gotten a little bit more complex. I'll be walking you through the differences of the seven delay effects pedals with some playing examples, of course. All the pedals today will be powered by the Voodoo Lab Pedal Power 3. I find that this is just the most convenient and cleanest way to organize your cables. And of course, you know how it is if you have an effects board full of pedals, it makes a difference, it makes things a lot more convenient and you're probably more likely to actually take out your pedal board and use it if the cabling is nice and clean. And the pedals are strapped down to the pedal train Metro 24, this is like one of their smaller models that I love. To me, as a synth user, it just seems more like a desktop unit. There are affiliate links for all the gear mentioned in this video. So of course, a lot of affiliate links. So make sure to have a look at that if you're interested. And if you're situated in North America, go with Sweetwater. They definitely have everything that you're looking for and their customer service is second to none. Basically any questions that you have, they get back to you right away. Starting with the Chase Bliss Therme. This is the only pedal on this list that is mono and doesn't have modes. That being said, it's the only compact pedal. It's analog, although it's controlled digitally. And that's what the folks at Chase Bliss Audio say, analog heart, digital brain. I would like to think that I have an analog heart and a digital brain. My first impression of this pedal is that it actually reminds me of another Chase Bliss audio pedal, Mood. Aesthetically, it's very similar. It has that same sort of compactness. Also, sonically, I find that there's some similarities there as well. If you're interested, Mood is a pedal that I discovered in the granular delay version of this series. So here's a link to that. So what major feature makes Therme unique in this comparison? It's a digitally controlled analog delay whose trails can be pitch shifted. Let's go ahead and play this riff. I'm gonna turn Therme on. Nothing happened, I wonder why, because the mix knob is all the way down. So let's bring this up. Obviously we know what a mix knob does. There's a very cool low pass filter as well on the delay. It's got a little bit of resonance on it. Sounds great. And then there's a region as well, which essentially acts as a feedback. I mean, that's what it is. So you don't want to feedback too much. I'll bring this down. Then down here we have in the middle, we have this knob here where we could change the tempo of the delay. So now we're on quarter notes, dotted eighths, eighth notes. And if we want, we could tap tempo this as well. Next, we'll take a look at the pitch shifting function of Therme, which is a major function. There's some sort of mathematical equation that kind of divvies up how the pitch is shifted uh, throughout the rhythms and throughout the delay. I'm not gonna try and explain this. This is more of a creative video. We're gonna be using our ears and just seeing how it affects the sound of the pedal or the riff coming into the pedal, I should say. Right now, pitch shifter one, I guess we'll call it, is off, so we're not hearing any difference in the pitch in the delay. So let's turn this up. We could tune it to a fourth. Right, so now the delay is being tuned up a fourth, a fifth. We could go up an octave. octave plus a fifth or even two octaves right so it's very subtle we're hearing it there let's go let's choose a fifth I like fifths and with this example here if we play with low pass filter in region we start to get different results I personally find that going up a fifth seems to give more uh, like lush and reactive results as opposed to going up maybe an octave plus a fifth. It becomes a lot more subtle. If we go to a fourth, let's say if the, if the interval is shorter, it's just a lot more active. Let's play with low pass filter here. So we have a second pitch shifter here. What if I turn this 
let's say, down an octave. What results does that give us? And just to give you like an A and B here, let's turn this off completely. Turn it back on. So as you can see, this is just a really simple way of subtly adding flavor or maybe not so subtly uh, in back of a really simple riff like what you're hearing through the bass station. And maybe even if you're feeling maybe atonal, let's say, you could play with this glide knob here. And now you're getting more like quirky textures, I guess you could say, as opposed to actual notes if I bring this down. It's sort of like a portamento effect on the delay. On the, on the pitch of the delay, I should say. Personally, I absolutely love the sound quality of pretty much every Chase Bliss pedal. They, they do it right, in my opinion, but of course, I'll let you draw your own conclusions. Let's move on to the next pedal on this list, the Boss DM-101. This pedal could be described as Boss's take on the digitally controlled analog approach just like what we saw with Therme. The DM-101 though is stereo. It's MIDI compatible, no CV though. And it definitely has more accessible presets. So you could just like spin the dial and choose the preset that you like. The thing I love about this pedal is just how descriptive it is. Everything is right there on the surface. It's obviously a bigger pedal. So you have more like tactile feel with it. It's also one of the few analog pedals on the market that also features algorithms. And we've got 12 of them. Personally, I think that the thing that makes this pedal stand out within this comparison is just how versatile and beastly it really is. Sharing the same format as another great boss delay, the RE202, which is a modern remake of the legendary Roland Space Echo, a tape style delay. And that's the thing about it. Each of these presets is essentially inspired by past classic boss analog delay pedals. So in a way, it's essentially like having 12 pedals in one in a pretty small space considering. <laughs> and on top of that, this is a very unique pedal that goes beyond any other boss delay pedal in terms of versatility and sonic qualities. It's also built like an absolute brick. There's just too many presets or you know modes to run through here. So I'm gonna be giving you a few of my favorites. Source Audio Nemesis. In terms of the layout and just how tactile it is, it's very similar to the DM-101. Obviously with one exception, this is a digital delay pedal as opposed to the DM-101 being analog. And of course, it's a little bit smaller. There's nothing hidden underneath the hood. Very tactile, very self-explanatory. There's a wet and dry mix, delay time, feedback, modulation, modulation rate, as well as intensity. Also, much like with the DM-101, the modulation will change depending on the setting or preset that you're using. For many of the engines, intensity controls the tone of the delay. So if you want something that's a little bit more on the high end or maybe even subtle, you could go up and then something dark, you would go down. But it also does things like pitch selection for the shifter effect or rhythmic patterns for the drum echo. It's a MIDI compatible stereo multi algorithm delay pedal with tons of creative options. Another thing that's notable, there is no CV compatibility. I also like that on the side, there is a five pin MIDI input and on the other side, there's a MIDI through. This is especially useful for synth users because a lot of synths do have five pin MIDI. And so tempo syncing is just a really easy option as a synth user with Nemesis. Again, because of its sort of self-explanatory tactile function, I think that just hearing the pedal 
would be the best description. Empress Ecosystem. This is one of my first delay pedals and it's also a digital multi-algorithm device. Technically, it's a delay and reverb pedal because there's a reverb preset right here, or I should say delay plus reverb. And let's take a look at what makes it unique. You're able to activate two delay engines simultaneously, right? So right here, if you could see the print, there's single, so right now it would just be one delay, dual parallel, dual serial, and left slash right, so that would pan the delays left and right. So we'll go with dual series for this example. I'm gonna hit play, and we don't hear anything because the mix is down for both of these. So this is analog delay. If I hit the encoder here, it'll switch over to delay plus reverb. So let's just hear what that sounds like. There's also two parameters here, so thing one and thing two, which once again, those are gonna switch depending on the uh, algorithm or the mode that we're using here. I can play with feedback, tone, right? The speed of the delay as well. Also, just to let you know, there's like an LFO sort of thing going on that's actually coming from the base station. That's not coming from the uh, ecosystem. Okay, so I've changed all my parameters. Let's say I like this. From here, I could jump over to analog, or I could switch it, I could do whatever I want. Maybe we could change it to something a bit more uh, different, something that's completely different from delay and reverb. So we're entering into some really weird experimental territory here. Uh, that tends to happen with whiskey. But now you're hearing um, both of these delays at the same time, and you can mix these as you'd like. The parameters are completely independent from one delay to the next. I find that Whiskey in itself is a really interesting preset, so let's actually just zero in on that. Single, Whiskey, and let's see what we can get from this. We change to a different preset there in Whiskey. And there we go, there's like sort of a shimmery sort of effect here on one of the Whiskey modes or presets. Another thing to note is that it has CV in, so if you're a modular synth user, this might be something that's up your alley. I am not really a modular person, so we won't get into that in this video. Red Panda Particle is a stereo digital multi-algorithm and is CV and MIDI compatible. So what makes it unique here? Well, it's mostly focused on creative types of delay like granular and pitch shifting. We're gonna turn our riff on here, turn the pedal on, and right away you're just like, what is going on? Well, the blend knob is turned to 100%, which means that this is what's being added to this riff here. This is like a granular delay sort of thing. It's like grasping at little chops of the riff and it's spitting it back out at us in a granular sort of fashion. There's different types here. So if we could choose random, this is one of my favorites for sure. Let's choose a smaller chop of the incoming audio. Maybe turn up the feedback. Again, this parameter will change depending on the setting that we're on here. In terms of how the pedal is organized, we have two different types of modes, so delay as well as pitch. So all of the delay modes are black, and all of the pitch modes are white here. We haven't tried a white mode yet, so let's try detune. Let's see what that gives us. Maybe 
which will change the delay time. Oh my god. Bring the parameter down. We're getting some Mario Super Nintendo sort of vibes here for sure. Granular Mario. <laughs> Bring this blend down a little bit. LVX. I've actually done a full review specifically on LVX. Here is a link to that video. This is a new generation multi-algorithm delay with a modular approach. Modular in the sense that there are many modules that make up the sound of any given preset or delay that you're gonna be using. The thing I like best about this pedal is that you have an option between six surface level hands-on controls. So you have four assigned controls right here, time, feedback, modulation, as well as mix, and two favorite parameters per preset. You're actually able to uh, change these as well. You could assign different parameters and bring them to the top of the pedal here. So we're currently on the misdirection preset. If I tap on this encoder here, this is where the modulation part of the pedal comes into play. I could scroll through these, preamp, dynamics, delay, filter. On this particular preset, there actually is no filter. So if I wanted to add one, I could just scroll through here. Let's say a comb filter, and then I could scroll through here. There's even more parameters for me to change, to work on, mix, looper, modifiers, like there's just so much here to work with. It's MIDI and CV compatible and there are plenty of presets here to choose from. What I like to do is choose one that I like and then sort of build on it. The delay sounds that I tend to fall back on with LVX, which we're gonna look at in a second, are the ones that have pitch in them. I really like the pitch parameter. The cool thing about pitch, especially with a monophonic synth like the bass station, is that you could turn it into like a harmonic thing. So let's play a riff here and we're gonna see what's going on underneath the hood. So this preset here, it's called Isochronus. Wow, it's very intense. As you can see, there's a lot going on. So let's see. First off, on the surface we have pitch. So if I wanna change this. So we got a fifth over top of what's going on here, which I think is really cool. Let's go underneath here, under the hood. I could change the type of delay. Modulate. I could change the type of modulation happening. I kind of like cassette. Let's turn this up a little bit. Completely different flavor. Cassette I like. Mix. Bring this back down. There's clearly some type of like reverb thing going on. So I think it's this one, Swell, that's under Dynamics. So I could change this to Diffusion instead, Limiter. Right, so this is a lot more than just a delay, granular delay pedal. It goes a lot further than that. Let's go down an octave. Right, so now we just have a completely different texture over top of this riff. Strymon Deco V2. In my opinion, this is a sexy sounding pedal. Kind of makes everything sound good. Strymon, of course, makes several amazing delays that could have made this shortlist, like the multi-algorithm timeline or the vintage Echo Machine emulator Volante. However, Deco was a good choice because it does things that are different from all the pedals on this list. It may not be as comprehensive and flexible as the multi-algorithm units in this video, but it could add definite magic to your sounds. Any of you who are watching, you might know who Tycho is. He's like an indie rock band meets synth sort of artist. Uh, he's a really cool live act. And he claims to use Strymon Deco all the time in the studio. He uses it on all of his synths. And if Tycho uses it, you know that this thing is quality. It's, it's a bit of a gem. This is a stereo and MIDI compatible digital pedal that can do a variety of things, including short echo, slapback, chorus, and flanger. A little reminder that these modulation effects are also delay based. For me, the split of this pedal is like warm tapey delay meets warm tapey saturation. And that's exactly how this pedal is split, right down the middle. So on the right side, you have your very simple delay settings. And on the left side, you have, again, your very simple sort of tapey texture settings. <laughs> Just to give you an idea of the lag time, you can really hear that. 
this wobble as well. Blend. Let's blend that lag time in there. Ooh, it's just, it's just sounds so good. I love what it does. And then over top of that, saturation. So a brighter saturation, a darker saturation. And there's two different types. There's classic. So we have two different flavors here. And then cassette, which is my favorite, definitely. Let's take this. Take this down, the filter. And we'll pull the lag time a little bit closer so it's almost like a slap. Okay, and if I turn this off, it just adds so much character. So cool. For me, it's the subtle things that really count. In terms of complexity, I feel like these are my favorite types of pedals. Very simple, to the point. It forces you to really use your ears and, and sort of dial your sounds in as opposed to maybe getting lost in the complexity of a pedal. So LVX is a great example of this. On the other hand, it's a much stronger and deeper sound design tool. You just have to invest more time into it. I think that covers it, guys. That's a lot of pedals. It's a lot of information. Hopefully this video pointed you in the right direction. Maybe if you're looking for a delay pedal. If you're in North America and you're interested in any of the pedals mentioned in this video, check out Sweetwater. They'll have pretty much everything that you need. And yeah, thanks again. Thank you guys so much for being here and see you in the next video.